AI is impacting every single profession and it just seems to get better and better over time. So how is it going to affect structural engineering? How should you prepare for it? And how should you keep learning engineering? Let's break it down. My name is Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. AI will be moving into the world of analysis. It will be making those decisions. It may be able to see patterns that you may not have even seen. You program it with the best knowledge, you'll be able to make decisions on models. I've seen it happen where it's making a decision on where beams should go, where reinforcement should go, how we frame up stuff and how we crack a model, provided that we we're analyzing it in the correct way and it's just a way of augmenting it not using it like a black box but knowing what it's doing and the decision that it's making it's definitely going to be moving a lot into those more basic repetitive tasks like load rundowns it's going to be looking at how to do column design stuff that we've done in the past it's going to be doing a lot of the stuff that we learnt off so it means that you're going to have to spend a lot of time especially if you're younger because there's a lot of learning into seeing how structures behave how loads transfer and doing that assessment so getting a feel of how structures work but you will potentially need to do it in a different way where you're playing with it. You're not actually doing the load run runs, but playing with it and understanding the true basis of structural mechanics. So it's gonna make a lot of detailed analysis such as nonlinear analysis quicker. It's gonna make a lot of better understanding of how structures actually behave and making those decisions about what we should fail, what we shouldn't fail, doing performance-based design. It's gonna bring a lot of these more complex analysis to our fingertips but it doesn't mean that we need to be more careful to make sure those outputs are correct. So if it puts garbage in, you're definitely going to get garbage out. So you need to make an assessment about whether you're putting the right information into that computer and whether you're prompting it correctly or not as well. I'd just like to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Geeks Outfit, who's kindly supplied this t-shirt and got a special offer for you. So they supply t-shirts for people like us who love engineering and maths but they'll be offering 25% discount to anyone that can use the link in my below description. But the biggest thing about AI is, is the fact that you don't want to become too reliant upon it. You don't want to be a cyborg, you want to be a centaur. So what do I mean? A cyborg is just someone that blindly uses it, just trusting everything that comes out of it, utilizing it for everything that they do, not leveraging the benefits that it has with your benefits as well. So you're just using it to replace yourself. Now, if you're using it to replace yourself, what are you really doing? What benefit do they have to have you there? They can just have someone prompting AI and get rid of you. And that doesn't really serve any benefit because you're not leveraging the true power of it. Where Centaur will try and use it and utilize it as a tool. So it's augmenting your abilities. So it's making you better at everything that you do, using it for what it's good for, but also leveraging your own knowledge and ideas to help make it better. You're thinking about it as a buddy and a colleague next to you, as opposed to someone who's just replacing you. So you're both working in combination to get the best results out of there. Doesn't mean everything will need to be thrown into AI as it can slow you down, especially if you're doing it the wrong way. As you're using it as a tool, it means that you need to have your knowledge up to date and keep ahead of the game as well. So it means that you need to have a solid founding in structural engineering. You need to have an understanding of structural mechanics, how buildings work, how loads flow through structures. Understanding the basics and even the more complex stuff is something that is gonna be more important than ever as this will allow you to utilize it and utilize your skills and prompt it and get to the correct answers quicker, faster, and utilizing the better results as a colleague that's working with you. But then even then, there'll be some things that it won't be great at. It'll be something about how you're displaying yourself, the communication and understanding someone's roles and responsibilities. But you will wanna make sure that you're utilizing it in the correct way and having best of both worlds. We can see this best example of this is in chess. For a long time, people could beat the computer. It was just easy, the grandmasters could also win. Then eventually AI got better than them, so it could beat any of the grandmasters. But then later on, you moved for a very long time into what they call a centaur approach, where you've got humans that can bluff and take calls and make additional decisions based on the knowledge that they have, and AI that's helping back them up. And for a very long time, AI and the human combination was the best of both worlds, leading to the best results out of everything that we do. So this is a great example about how we can leverage it for the long run. So we're still around for a really long time before we can be replaced. Yes, eventually chess was able to take over and now AI can just beat everyone. However, it took a really long time to get there. Now engineering is quite complex. So it means that you will have a long run in provided that you're using AI to back up your knowledge. But if you don't, you'll definitely get left behind. Other people that will be using AI will have better knowledge, will have better analysis, will have better results coming back. So they're getting better feedback in to make better decisions. They'll also be able to make those decisions faster. But if you just use it as a cyborg, you'll be the ones that also get left behind as well. Yes, it may be easier in the short term. You don't need to think, it just gives you the answers. But you're really selling out your own future. Probably the best example of where some of the biggest revolutions occurred in the past was the Luddites, where they are affected by machinery and manufacturing. The people that didn't keep up were definitely left behind. 
So it's a really critical time that you're making sure that you're keeping up your knowledge, you're understanding the benefits and negatives of AI, but also means that it's a very hard time to know what to be learning. People nowadays don't actually know what kids should be learning in the next 10 years, how things are gonna change, and it's gonna to lead to a rapid rate of change. And we can see this over the last three years. From the change of ChatGPT 3 to 4.0, has led to significant changes and improvements in a very short period of time. So you need to make sure that you're up with the latest changes and technology. You need to make sure that you're constantly learning and seeing how to utilize this to your best advantage, but using it for how it's actually intended. Over time, we will learn how to use this in a better way. There will be personalized learnings, but we're currently not there yet. And now, more than ever, communication is going to become more critical. Having that face-to-face -face communication, having those brainstorming sessions, building personal connections. Things like that are things that you can utilize that it can't do. Building your own brand. That authenticity is something that you've really got to work on, as this will be something that will make you stand out from the crowd, in addition to utilizing such tools just to get you better information to make better decisions. So some of the key things that you'll need to be watching out for is making sure you're getting more of that on-site experience so you can understand how buildings are put together, some of the critical details about what you may change to make things easier to build. You want to be getting those knowledge about how to prompt AI correctly, how to make sure the answers out of it are correct, and just not relying upon it. Though you can tweak it a little bit to get you better results. So looking at how to prompt correctly can give more valid results. It's easier for someone like me who's got a lot of knowledge and background and experience that I can read through something like I'm just checking someone else's work. I can tweak it and modify it and it gives me a lot better feedback a lot quicker than if I was using other methods. I need to make sure that I'm not spending too much time just relying upon it, having answers backwards and forwards. It's more like a buddy that you send away and just gives an answer. You come back in another 10, 15 minutes, even though it has a response quickly, you can come back later and verify it so you can do your own work. So looking for that on-site experience, looking for more of the hands-on experience where you can, where you can get your hands dirty, doing some hand calculations. Don't try and skip steps. Looking at its verification and critically thinking about, is this the correct way? Because if you do prompt in a certain way, you might get wrong result. Where if you prompt in a different way, the results can change. It's just like asking anyone a question. If you ask it in a certain way, they can be biased based on the way that you ask it. you will have the similar mistakes. The needs to make sure that you're looking at it and asking the right questions. But as we state, the biggest thing that I'll bring up is the fact that if you become over-reliant upon it, your skills will degrade and you'll slowly fade out. So instead of becoming a buddy and a colleague that you work with, you'll just become someone that's prompts and is, doesn't have that same understanding. Where someone that utilizes both their skills and its skills and utilizing it in combination and trying to keep that learning up will definitely win out every single time. So if you want to keep up your knowledge and have one thing that most structural engineers miss that will bring your engineering to the next level, go to link to a video here. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You need to become a YouTube or Patreon member. Without the support of my YouTube and Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. And engineering is a great field to be in, just look into the future, it's a bright one. My name's Brendan, your structural engineer, and I hope to see you next week.